Real quick before we get started, we still have new sleeves available, I'm pretty sure, by the time this video comes out. So make sure you go pick them up at playtowinmtg.com. And if you're from not in the United States and the shipping says United States, just put in your address and it'll change the shipping to where you are from. So yeah. don't worry, it does ship to not just United States. <laughs> Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. I'm Dylan. And I'm Cam. This week, we're joined by Jim and Elliot of the Spike Feeders to figure out which one of the three color decks we're playing in this video is best in CEDH. The Spike Feeders, uh, we run also a bunch of commander gameplay, CDH and casual and everything in between. You can also find me. I'm on the Commander Rules Committee at JimTSF on Twitter. This video is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Check out the affiliate link down below to help support the show. So we have Cam on our patron Young Mox's Aloro list. Elliot from the Spike Feeders is on Anala. I'm playing Tim Najeska Nauseless Mad Farm, and Jim, also from the Spike Feeders, is on Tivit. I got a pregame because Cameron's first, right? Yep. I have a Gemstone Caverns, and I will pitch this Tainted Pack. On my upkeep, gain two life. First time I remember that for my first turn. I will play an Urborg and pass the turn. Flooded Strand. Fetch, so 39. Find a Valk. And I will cast a Ragavan. Nice. Nice. And I will pass the turn. Draw card. Let's play Glimmer Void. Cast Chromox. With Chromox, I will imprint this Loyal Prentice. I will cast Timna. And I'll also get this Mox Opal out of my hand while there's no fishes to be seen. What happened to mid six? <laughs> well, I only have one card left in hand. <laughs> oh, oh, poor me. Tim is not going to draw me any cards or anything. <laughs> oh, look at, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, go ahead, you know? Okay, let's see. I'll play an exotic orchard. I'll cast him in a crypt because it's about to get so much worse. I'll cast Grim Monolith and then I'm going to cast an Esper Sentinel. Ooh, in response, I would like to Vamp Tutor. Uh, I will go down 240 again. That's the power of Aloro, baby. Free Vamp Tutors. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's good. I'm finding this random card. What is it? It's, you'll find out. Then I'll pass it again. I'll play a Silent Clearing. Uh, game two on my upkeep, I mean. You heard me say that. I'm going to go down to 41, and I'm going to cast a Dothy Voidwalker. Jim, have one. Here's a Mana Crypt. I will happily, thank you. And then, so that I don't feed you again, here's a Talisman of Progress. Uh, I will pass. Combat. Monkey at Cam. Yeah, I can't block, so I will go down to 39 then. Make a treasure. May I see uh, the top Sunken card? Sunken Ruins. Oh, this asshole can't play lands, right? No. Right. No. Tough. It's Sunken Ruined. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> nice. Bloodstained Mire, and I will fetch. Exiled. Oh, yeah. Dothy. Meow. You got a Bloodstained Mire, so I'll find a Badlands. So I will pay, unfortunately, two mana, paying for the Sentinel for this Soul Ring. And I will pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, draw. One, two, three, cast Jessica. I will not pay for Esper Sentinel, you may draw. Uh, Jessica will enter with two counters on it. I'm gonna remove them both to deal two damage to Esper Sentinel, Dothy Voidwalker, and Ragavan. This Jessica felt so good. That's I mean, nuts. I've been playing a little bit more Tim to Jessica recently. This deck is awesome. And being able to just like very easily three for one and get in for card advantage, this deck is so sick. Yeah, <laughs> card, it has two card advantage commanders. That's yeah. pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, oh sure. sure. Pretty good. That's a pretty good one, pretty Dylan. Pretty good one, Dylan. Yes, if anyone can pinpoint good. our uh, accent. Leprechaun? Honestly, most <laughs> of my accents end up being Leprechaun. Yeah. Combat. Elliot, I'm going to attack you with Timna. 36. Um, go to 42 and then 41. I don't think I lost life yet and draw up Timna. I got nothing else to really do, though. I will pass turn. I will untap flip for mana crypt. So spike feeders, no damage. Playing with power is damage. <laughs> <laughs> no damage. I will draw a card. Play this inventor's fair. Tap the mana crypt, one floating to cast mana vault. Then I'll tap this for black black and cast Dothy Voidwalker. In oh, case, you, in <laughs> case you missed it. Son <laughs> of a bitch. And then I'm gonna pass. Untap, upkeep, go up to 41 with Aurora, Aloro, and then uh, odds I will take damage. It, it was an odds. It rolled off the screen, but it was an odds. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. Man, we are like having the worst draws in the annals of human history. Man, you have a mana crypt. I will pass. Just so we're aware, every single card in my hand currently has so many pips. All right, well, we'll, we'll complete the trifecta over here. We'll play the Underground Sea. This might be the craziest thing anybody's ever said in an Anala deck, but I think I'm going to cast Anala. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Untap, upkeep, draw card. Combat, Timna, come again. I'll take two, 36. 36, I'll gain, go to 43, main two, lose one, go to 42, draw card. Pass turn. I'll untap. 
Same thing, playing with powers damage. Damage. Go to 37. I will play Odawara. Did he gain his one life off of Inventor's Fair on his upkeep? I'm gonna cast Tivit. ETB. I'm gonna vote for two treasures. I'll give you a clue then. You're gonna have a clue for me as well. Clue, 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 clue. I'm gonna move to combat and I will attack Elliot with the Dothby for three. I do not have shadow, so I will go to 33. And then I'll pass. All right, on my turn, I will go up to 38 and then say odds I take damage again. Nice, evens. I will draw. All right, that was another horrible draw. I will pass. Draw. Yeah, this thing, this four or five is a blocker, so I will play this Marsh Flats and I will pass the turn. End step, cast Enlighten Tutor. It's Mana Crypt. Is that bad for us? Uh, very. Extremely, actually. You guys are playing blue, right? You have counter spells, don't you? I told you every <laughs> card in my hand is bad. <laughs> All right, put this on tap. Untap. Upkeep. Draw card. Cast Mana Crypt. Black, black, black. One, two, three. Six mana. Cast Bolus' Citadel. I am going to respond. Nice. I'm going to crack a clue to draw card. I'm then going to pass priority. Cool. Bolus' Citadel resolves. I'll take a peek on top. I'm going to pay four life for this Mothering Tithe. I'll go to combat. Cam, I'll get you with Timna. 36. I'll go up to 40. And then in my second main phase, I'll lose one and draw card. Take a peek on top. One mana for a Ragavan. One life. Seven mana for a Hordling Broodlord. I will uh, have an ETB and I'll go search my library. All right, I'll give myself a cut here. I have definitively decided this is the card that I'm getting without a doubt. I'll pay two life and cast the Wishclaw Talisman. Cast this Vampiric Tutor from uh, Exile, convoking, tapping the Hordling Broodlord to do it. Find this card on top. I will spend three life to cast Son Half. Go to 24, target the Hordling Broodlord. I am going to respond. Shit. Pay one. Uh, cast Dispel. I can't respond. It is Dispelled. Saw in Half goes to Dothy Zone. Dothy. Yeah. Saw. Son of a bitch. Damn, that's kind of a shame. That's the first time we really got to see that on the channel and see how cool this Hordling Broodlord and Saw in Half interaction is. Yeah, well, don't worry. It's not over yet. Bose Citadel is a powerful card. Diabolic's Intent. Go to 22 as additional cost. Sacrificing the Ragavan. Diabolic Intent, okay. You got it. Find this card. Take a peek on top. There we go. Two life for a Grim Monolith. Go to 20. Tap it for three. Cast Sensei's Divining Top, floating two. I'm going to sacrifice a treasure for a black and cast Demonic Consultation. Yeah, that's, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna name Mental Misstep. I think that's a good call. So we'll reveal the top six. Unmarked Grave, Dress Down, Morphic Pool, Belvoir Stone, Underground Sea, Sol Ring. And then we'll start revealing for Consult. Ranger Captain, Wish Claw, Lotus Petal, Ristic Study, Swamp. Uh, an offer you can't refuse, Toxic Deluge. There it is. There it is. There it is. All righty. I would like to cast Mental Mist, <laughs> paying two life, going down to 35. Since his top is exiled under Dothy. This is great for me. Not only have I already dumped a whole bunch of shit onto the board, so even if I do get stopped, I'm in like a great setup situation for next turn, but Jim just had to exile most of his entire library just to try to stop this Sensei's Divining Top Bolus's combo. If I get them both out, then I can kind of like draw through most of the rest of my deck. Uh, so this is necessary to stop, but it's also good for me that he had to do all that. Luckily, Elliot and I aren't going to lose the game here immediately, but now we have to try to capitalize off of this situation. Situation, yeah, so. you two are both kind of being sneaky. I haven't really done much this game. Well, sneaky, sneaky's a word for it. <laughs> Can't do anything is another <laughs> word for it. <laughs> Play this land from the top of my library for my turn. Off the top, I will cast Jessica's Will, lose three more life, go to 17, target Cameron, and make both modes. So four red mana and top three cards. This says spells I cast from exile have Convoke. And this is Exiled. Fun little interaction that doesn't come up right now because all my creatures are tapped, but Jessica's Will and Hordling Broodlord work really well together. Tippy tappy, tippy tappy. What is what is that? It's Ranger Captain. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Goblin Engineer, Cloudstone Curio, Ranger Captain of Eos. Let's crack my Scalding Tarn. Goes under Dothy. Go to 16. I'm in the Badlands here. One of this red into a Rite of Flame. Go down to three and then five. With two generic and one of the red, go to four, cast the Cloudstone Curio. I'm going to respond to the Cloudstone Curio. Of course you are. Uh, of course you are. <laughs> Crack the to draw card. Mother and Tithe. Oh, nice. Can I get a treasure? You can have a treasure. I would like to exile Mnemonic Betrayal to cast Force of Negation. <laughs> 
Nice. I get what I deserve. Dude, this has all still been one turn. This is the third time Jim has tried to interact with me this turn. This, I mean, very impressive on this deck. Like how this, de I mean, I didn't build this deck. So super impressive to watch it play, but also impressive that Tivit is able to find three sources of interaction in a single turn. Three mana, go down to three mana, use one of the red, activate Wishclaw Talisman, give it to Cameron. I'll find this card and I will respond to Force of Negation with a deflecting SWAT. Redirect negation to SWAT. SWAT is exiled over here. Cloudstone Curio in play. Going out to one red mana, cast the Goblin Engineer. No, I'll just fail to find. I'm failing to find here because the Dothy is here. I was able to protect my Cloudstone Curio, but because of that, uh, that one mana that I had to spend with the Wishclaw, I'm a little short to actually win the game now. So I can only just make sure that my Cloudstone is in play, which is better than it being exiled anyway. So I'll take that. Oh, and then I have a Cloudstone Curio trigger when it enters. Bouncing Ordling Broodlord, I guess. And then ETB. And then Bullets of Citadel, take a peek again. One life for Mana Vault. Go to 15. There's a land. I have one red mana, treasure, bad lands. Uh, that's it. I'm going to move phases and go to my end. Ranger Captain gets exiled. My red mana goes away. I will untap two triggers. I've got my Mana Vault and my Mana Crypt. So I'm going to stack them such that Mana Vault resolves first. Uh, I'm not going to pay the four. Then Mana Crypt will flip. No damage. Okay, I'm going to activate the Dothy and I will cast Vampiric Tutor. I'm going down to 33 off the Vampiric Tutor. I'm going to get this card. I have this many cards in my library. If anybody's nice. curious. I would like to draw a card for my turn. Smothering Tide Trigger. I'm not going to pay for it. Nice. I have two treasures. I'd like to move to combat. Dylan, what are you at? I'm at 15. I would like to send six at you in the air. It's flying, right? I'll take six. Go to nine. I'm going to make two treasures for myself. I'm going to give you a clue. I'm also going to give you a clue. Also a clue. I think I'm just going to pass. Untap, upkeep, gain two life, going up to 38, and then roll for craft. Odds I take damage. We roll the three. Let's go down to 35. Draw for turn and put a sea of clouds into play. And thanks to Urborg, I can go black, 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 one, two, three, and cast my own bullets. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. I missed my smothering try trigger. Can I have a treasure? Yes. Yeah, you can have it. All right, I'll lose two life for the Skilled Drake going down to 33. Did you want an Inala? <laughs> yes, I do, actually. I mean, I really want to tip it, but I don't think that's happening. And I'm immediately stopped. Okay. <laughs> um, but I have an Anala, so I will pass the turn. Oh, when, when should I say that I could have won on my turn, but I got really excited about Bolus of Citadel and decided to do that instead? I mean, we don't have to talk about that if you okay. don't want to. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we won't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a Gilded Drake that will be represented by this Merit Lage. <laughs> End of your turn, I'll crack uh, my Marsh Flats, I suppose. Go to 32. Uh, sure, just get a tapped watery grave. Raw for my turn. I will pay for Smothering Tide, I suppose. <laughs> oh yeah, Smothering Tide trigger, thank you. City of Brass, that's an end for the turn. And Talisman of Creativity. Dylan, attack you for three with this Kildedrick. Oh my god. Yeah, I'll take three, go to six. That's my contribution, go ahead. <laughs> Untap, upkeep, not the Grim Monolith. Flip for the Mana Crypt, odds to take damage. It's rolling off screen, it's a two. Cast Hordling Broodlord. Hordling Broodlord ETB. I'm gonna cast this Dockside from Exile, convoking the Goblin Engineer and the Hordling Broodlord to cast it. That's gotta be worth it. Okay, yeah, I am gonna respond by uh, sacking two treasures uh, to cast Cyclonic Rift targeting Cloudstorm Curio. Yeah, that's um, that's that's fine. It returns to my hand. Dockside on the stack. I will crack one of my clues to draw card. Smothering Tithe, I'll make a treasure. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna pay and then I'll pass on the Dockside ETB. Make 12 treasures. Cast the Mox Diamonds, discarding the Command Tower. I'll play the Marsh Flats as my land for turn from the top of my library. I'll use three of this treasure and I'll cast the Cloudstone Curio. Crack the Marsh Flats. Go to five. Uh, one life for Esper Sentinel, which is go I'll go to four and hilariously will not trigger Cloudstone Curio because it is an artifact. Let's spend one, two, three, four, five. Mana to cast Jessica, Thrice Reborn. It enters with three loyalty counters on it. I'm gonna minus Jessica to deal three damage to my Timna, three damage to the Gilded Drake, three damage to Cam's face. Jessica goes back to the command zone. I'm gonna spend five mana, leaving four treasures. Cast Timna. Timna triggers Cloudstone Curio, bounce the Dockside Extortionist. Use two treasures to cast Dockside Extortionist. 
Yeah. Make yeah. 12 treasures. With the ETB from the Cloudstone Curio, I will bounce the Goblin Engineer. Cast the Goblin Engineer with a couple of my treasures, triggering itself. I'm not going to bother searching, and the Cloudstone Curio bouncing ducks. Present a loop, casting these things back and forth, bouncing themselves, making 1 billion trillion treasures. Okay. Great. I will cast Jessica from my command zone, this time with four loyalty. Minus to deal four damage to each of you. Cast again. Do that a whole bunch of times. Yeah. A whole bunch of times. Wow. Wow, we Dylan, Dylan, dude, this Mad Farm deck is super resilient. Can I want through three different pieces of interaction there, plus a fourth one on uh, Jim's turn when he was able to Cyclonicraft something? I mean, Dockside making twelve treasures is super helpful. Tivit's one, I think, issue is that it feeds Dockside kind of a lot. Even though Jim was able to sack some of his stuff, he wasn't able to sack all of it. Portland Broodlord, that card is, even though it didn't get to go through its like intended line, I was still able to use it a couple times to tutor for different things. I found the Dockside Extortionist, super powerful card. Yeah, it really goes to show the power of building around Bolus the Citadel as opposed to Ad Nauseam. Yeah, I'm not playing Ad Nauseam in this deck, which feels super weird, but I am playing 23 lands, which feels really great in a turbo deck, so. Feels a lot better with Bolus the Citadel yeah. that way than Ad Nauseam. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Luke Cook, Young Mox, thanks for the necklace, by the way. AJ Alwosebi, Demon of Rosgrease, Kowaja, A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G. Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Big thank you to Dragon Shield. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Make sure you use our affiliate link to tell them that we sent you there. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. And thank you for watching. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>this hat looks humongous on me and makes my whole head look small. This video was also edited by Cubby. Did you notice that I didn't edit this video? Let us know. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Welcome to Play to Win. Where we play to win? Oh! <laughs>